Greetings, everyone. I'm David Darst here to give you the December and year end recap for 2023. In December, as you know, the Federal Reserve had its last Federal Open Market Committee meeting of the year, in which they decided again to leave interest rates, policy interest rates, unchanged since July the 26th. That's the last time they raised interest rates. So they're still at this uh, mid 5% level. The uh, markets uh, immediately afterwards, and they gave in the press conference following the uh, indication, Chair Jay Powell, that they would cut interest rates three times in 2024, which would give you uh, a approximately 4.6% policy interest rate uh, at the end of that period, at the end of 2024. Now, financial futures markets do not necessarily agree, and they believe the Fed will cut interest rates six times. That uh, at the end of uh, uh, at the end of the uh, year, 1228, December 29th, actually, uh, the Fed funds futures markets were forecasting and projecting a policy interest rate of 3.9%, uh, which would indicate a, uh, interest rate cuts of five to six uh, cuts. Um, December, uh, and basically this whole year has been all about artificial intelligence. It's been about the economy doing better than expected. Uh, and it's been about uh, the anticipation, inflation coming down and the anticipation of these policy interest rate cuts. In the month of December, the Standard & Poor's 500 index was up 4.4%, and you may recall in November, it was up 8.9%. So for the year as a whole, it closed up 24.2% at 47.6930. It just missed uh, making a new all-time record. However, the Dow Jones Industrial Average did make an all-time uh, closing record uh, at the end of the year. NASDAQ had also a positive good month, up 5.5%. In the month of November, you recall, it was up 10.7%, up 43.4% for the year. And the NASDAQ 100 is up 52% uh, for the year. Uh, it, it is an even more concentrated version of the NASDAQ, which is itself very technology heavy. The big surprise and maybe the star of December was, of course, the Russell 2000, which is your small and mid-cap companies. This is your bread and butter of the economy. The Russell 2000 in December was up 12.1%, 12.1% in the month. Uh, November, you may recall, was up 8.8% .8 for the month. So it closed the year up 15.1%. It's amazing. Uh, you look back a few months, it was in negative territory. And here we are, up 15.1% for the year. Gold uh, was up 1.2%. Interest rates uh, easing off, as well as um, the dollar uh, being a little bit weaker has <clears throat> uh, helped gold. Uh, gold closed at 2062 per troy ounce. And uh, uh, it, for the month, it was up 1.2%. November was up 2.7%. Oil, uh, there have been some uh, major developments in oil involving OPEC+, Plus, uh, involving the demand side, involving the supply side, involving the U.S. Uh, getting up over 13 million barrels, uh, 13 and a fraction million barrels per, per day produ uh, production. Uh, oil for the month was down 5.7%. Uh, this is West Texas Intermediate, and November, you recall, was down 8.9%. So oil uh, at $71.65 per barrel uh, was down 10.7% for the year as a whole. Before we move on, let me just remind you, Japan's stock market uh, was up 28% for the a year. Uh, the yen, however, against the dollar was down about 8%. So you, uh, when you translate all that, you're, you're up about 20% in Japanese stocks. Uh, European equities up 19% for the year. And the euro was actually up uh, 3% for the U.S. dollar uh, for the year as a whole. Turning to the bond markets, the two-year treasury fell 50 basis points. That's a big move in the month of December. To close the year uh, at 4.23%, that means they were down a total of 21 basis points for the year as a whole. We had 
uh, interest rates up, interest rates down. You had the Silicon Valley Bank Corp uh, and other banks uh, problems during the year. Uh, you had a, a number of developments that uh, influenced the uh, treasury markets. You had uh, worries about uh, excessive supply of treasuries. You had Janet Yellen, the treasury secretary, uh, deciding to shift the maturity schedule of the bonds. Uh, that helped uh, bonds rally. Inflation coming down and the, uh, the different composition of the treasury supply helped interest rates come down. Now, the 10-year treasury, this one was amazing to us. Uh, the 10-year uh, treasury was down 46 basis points in the month of December. It was down uh, 54 basis points in the month of November. Uh, and for the year as a whole, it closed at 3.88%, which is exactly where it began this year. So a lot, as William Shakespeare would say, a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Uh, it did signify a lot of things relating to inflation, relating to the economy. I would remind everyone, the two-year treasury is an indication of Fed policy. The 10-year treasury is an indication of the economy and the inflation outlook. Uh, People are very excited that the uh, Treasury yields have come down for the 10-year, but they're beginning to scratch their heads and ask themselves, is this because of the inflation coming down, or could it be a precursor, an indication, a foreboding of economic weakness? So we'll be watching that, and we'll be keeping you up to date as we go forward here. The 30-year Treasury was down 52 basis points in the month of December, following a 50 basis point decline in November, uh, and for the year as a whole, it was up six basis points to 4.03. Uh, it closed last year at 397, this year at 4.03, up six basis points. Before we leave the uh, yield market, let me just say the 10-year tips, which we follow, that's real yields. Uh, and real yields, when they get high, can become a big, uh, uh, break on the economy. Uh, real yields were 2.5% in October, okay? Back when the 10-year treasury uh, was about, uh, was above 5%. The real yield was about 250 uh, in October. It closed the year at 172 in December. So you were down a basically 78 to 80 basis points between October and December. And again, that's stimulative. The biggest uh, uh, I think markets have been really not flabbergasted, not surprised, but they've been uh, kind of dazzled by there's been no pushback by the Fed. There have been a few comments, but very few, that you've had financial conditions easing, and that's a stimulative thing. Stock market up, bond market up, meaning the yields are down, and the dollar has been another stimulative force uh, with the... Uh, uh, index for the year, the dollar index down 0.8%. Let's uh, wrap up here with Apple. Apple was up 48% for the year. Microsoft up 57% for the year. This is your Magnificent Seven, remember? Amazon up 81% for the year, Amazon. Meta, which is your Facebook, okay, Facebook, up 194%. That has essentially almost tripled Meta this year. You have um, a Google, that's the, the old, uh, the Alphabet, which is the old Google. Uh, Google was up 53%. Then you get to Tesla. Tesla was up 101%. And NVIDIA, which is this whole artificial intelligence uh, enthusiasm and, and investor excitement, uh, was up 239%. So NVIDIA has essentially tripled. Going through um, the, uh, quarterly, uh, the quarterly earnings progression. So the quarter, uh, full year earnings are expected to be, and we'll get the first uh, look at the fourth quarter earnings when J.P. Morgan begins uh, to release its fourth quarter results on Friday, the 12th of January of this coming month. Uh, and then you'll have all the other companies following. Now, the, uh, the expectation for the first quarter of earnings is expected to be up 6%, according to FactSet. Second quarter up 10, 10 and a half percent. Third quarter up 8.9 percent. And fourth quarter up 18 percent. So this year's earnings, uh, 
are supposed to be up about 11 and a half percent uh, after this past year's earnings uh, being up 0.6 percent. The, uh, the IMF, uh, the Federal Reserve, their uh, GDP forecast for 2023 as a whole, we've uh, we will get we will begin to get those numbers at the end of January, then the end of February, and the final revision of that end of March. Uh, right now, it's expected to be up 2.6 percent for the uh, year as a whole, and next year up 1.4 percent. Let me just say, uh, financial markets and stocks tend to like it when you have the economy slowing, but earnings going up and that's right now what seems to be. So we're entering this year with somewhat of a positive bias. We are expecting a slowing in the economy first couple of quarters of this year, maybe dipping into uh, what would be uh, classified as a recession. We will see. We don't know yet. Uh, but it's been astounding. We started this year, 2023, everybody looking for a recession, a big drop in earnings. It just did not materialize. I think the uh, lagged effects of the stimulus uh, were very, very powerful. Uh, another form of stimulus was uh, energy prices were lower, okay? We, uh, we come back to our, our thinking in terms of asset allocation. Uh, there's a, a meaningful place in there for alternative investments. You really need to have uh, some private equity, some private credit, uh, so maybe some private real estate uh, in there. Uh, these are uh, low correlation. Uh, they are stable. They tend, to, many of them tend to throw off decent yields, and they're very good portfolio balancing, portfolio hedging mechanisms. So. Uh, the old 60-40, 60 60% stocks, 40% bonds, we basically have this uh, adjusted and modified where you have uh, a, a healthy allocation to stocks, some liquidity, and a healthy allocation to alternatives. With that, we wish everyone a bright start to the year 2024 and look forward to catching up with you very soon.